newspaper files of the early West record many stories of famous and notorious characters of that period. John Wesley Harden, a Texas bad man who was unique in the outlaw annals of even that unique state. Before he was 25 years old during the 1870s, he had killed 40 men, cold-blooded, ruthless killer. here. I am. Why? I am Yellow Hat of the Osage Indian Nation. Howdy. I'm John Wesley Harden. You do not know the act of Congress concerning the passage of cattle in Indian territory? <laughs> no, Yellow Hat. Tell me about it. You pay 10 cents a head to Indian Nation. How many head do you have? 1,200. That is $120 you owe us. Tell you what I'll do with a Yellow Hat. I'm a gambler. I hear tell that your tribe pretty good gamblers, too. Suppose we uh, pick a card for that $120. Double or nothing? I will do it. Highest card wins. High card win. <laughs> Nine of clubs. Queen of diamonds. Well, I, looks like your lucky day. $120 doubled, $240. All right, your cattle go through. Thanks, yellow hat. Wasted enough time already. My name's Clark, Matt Clark. I'm a railroad detective, and I'd been given a new assignment. The railroad depended on cattle for most of its revenue out here in the West. Two Indians had been shot down in cold blood, and the Indians refused to allow any of the herds coming up from Texas to cross their territory to the railroad sidings. That's right. Pull yourself up a chair. I'm Arthur Sills. The railroad said they were sending you. We appreciate your help. We well, you want to clean those murders up just as bad as you do, Mr. Sills. I'm sorry to say this, Mr. Clark, but we've had more trouble since we got in touch with the railroad. The Indians are stopping all the herds coming across their territory. There's been bad feeling and more killings. If it doesn't stop, there'll be a real bloody uprising. I realize the Osage are a proud nation, Mr. Sills. But do you have any idea how it all happened? No, I wish I had. After Yellow Hat was killed, I talked to the trail boss and his men. He claims he paid the toll charge and moved on. Do you have any idea who the trail boss was? Well, let's see. Oh, yes, here it is. John Wesley Harden. Wes Harden? Do you know him? I'm afraid I do, Mr. Sills. He's wanted for murder over all the Southwest Territory. Then he lied to me about Yellow Hat. This man is a killer. He's already murdered 20 men. Fantastic. Maybe you'd better find Harden and have a talk with him. Have any idea where he was heading? 
It says here the herd was heading for Abilene. Abilene. Well, if I know Wes Harden, he'll still be there. He's a great gambler and a ladies' man. Ladies' man, that's it. Where can I send a wire? At the hotel in town. Thanks very much. I hope you'll catch him. I think I've got just a bait for him. Yes, I did have just a bait for Wes Harden. My associate, Frank Adams, was sent on to Abilene. I was to meet her. Frankie was as beautiful as she was smart. Hey, Frankie, set him up over here. Hey, Joe, give me a bottle of that good whiskey. How's business? Couldn't be better. Nothing but these for tips. I'm thinking of hanging on to this job and quitting the railroad. Well, you certainly look as if you fit the job. I is everything. Fine. Got some of the best customers in the place. One very important. Hey, Frankie, where's that drink? Right away, Mr. Harden. Hey, Joe, hurry up with that bottle. So that's him. Yeah, top dog himself. He's my best customer. Be back. Well, what took you so long, baby? Bar was busy. Yeah? Well, you tell that bartender that when Wes Harden wants a drink, he wants it right now. Why, Wes, if he'd known it was you, he would have been jumping. <laughs> I figured you'd catch up with me, Marshal, but you got me all wrong. I can explain everything. Let's keep our voices down, Zeke. I saw you pass by the office, so I followed you down here. I haven't seen you in a couple of years. Good to see you again. Good to see you, too. You know, Matt, uh, I'm used to bad men and outlaws kicking their heels up around these parts, but I ain't you sure about rival lawmen. What brings you here? Fun or duty? Well, I guess you could say with duty. Oh, uh, you're after someone? Yeah, and I'm not alone. There's the government, railroads, states, and territories of the West. Oh, you must be quite a man. Well, I ain't gonna ask you who he is. Matt, I'd like to tell you something. I reckon I have enough rustlers, embezzlers, tin horn gamblers, train robbers, yes, and even downright murderers in this room to bust the seams of a dozen jailhouses wide open. Now, Abilene's where they come to spend their money. You know why? Because I don't care what they've done elsewhere. I won't arrest them as long as they behave themselves here. So, uh, tear up that warrant and I'll see you later. Stick around, Frankie. You bring me good luck. I'm sorry, boys. We're going to have to continue the game some other time. You leaving us? You'll break up a winning streak. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, it's for you. Thanks. Let's have it, Dave. They paid off just as soon as those cattle were loaded on the track. <laughs> Not a bad chunk of money for just trailer and that bunch up here. Are we going through without plan? Why not? Check the train schedules? Yeah. Those cattle cars pull out in one hour. How many more men will we need? Yeah, two more ought to do it. I think we can pick them up right here. Hey, Frankie, come over here, will you? What do you want? The same thing as you were drinking? No, oh, sit down, sit down. You know any cowboys who'd like to pick up a fast dollar and can keep their mouths shut? All cowboys can use money. Most of them can keep their mouths shut. Point them out to me. Pull on the dark hat and the tall one down at the end of the bar. Thanks. Take the one in the black hat.
buy you a drink? Yeah, thanks. Set him up over here. Cowboy, how'd you like to make yourself a fast dollar? Sure, but what doing? Well, if you're gonna ask questions, forget it. Sorry. When do I start to work? Right now. And you stand to make yourself some real money. Where are you from? And what was the marshal talking to you about? <laughs> I didn't think there was supposed to be any questions asked. <laughs> Sorry. slows down for the grade, you men shove the cattle out the doors. You stick with me. We'll be waiting to round them up. I'll move them up the head of the canyon. All right, let's go. like me stealing their cattle, but that was the evidence I needed to put Wesley Harden behind bars that could prove a murder charge against him. Dave, hey, come over here. You and Dave stay with the cattle and keep moving up the trail. I'm going into town and find a quick sale. Isn't this the same bunch of cattle you trailed in there a few days ago? Thought there weren't going to be any questions. Remember? What's the matter? My horse has got a loose shoe. Keep the herd moving, and I'll catch up with you later. All right. Russell, right off the train, you just got a wire from the boss. Just wait until he finds out who helped Russell him. 
Where's the marshal? I sent for him. Well, Hardin's over in the saloon right now. Yeah, I know. This time, we have the goods on him. Remember one thing. You're the only witness we've got, so don't go get yourself shot up before the trial. Well, 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 if it ain't the young lady herself. Yeah, there must be some reason for both of you to pay me a visit. What's on your mind? It's Wes Harden, Marshal. This time, he broke your own rule. Stole a herd of cattle right off the car just outside of Abilene. You sure about that? I'm positive I was there. It's the same herd he brought up for the cattle company. If you'll send a posse out on the North Trail, you can pick up his partners and return the herd. Will you testify against him? That's my job. All right. I'll pick him up just as soon as he comes back into town. You won't have to wait, Marshal. He's over in the saloon right now trying to sell a stolen herd. Come on. <laughs> together and be disposed of the draw. All right, I'll wait here. I want to talk to you, Wes. Oh, howdy, Marshal. Well, I'm, I'm busy right now. This can't wait. You're under arrest. What for? Rustling. You're charged with stealing a herd of cattle from the railroad. Well, now that's a mighty nice trick, if it can be done. It was done. Now, you know my rules, Wes. We don't bother you in this town as long as you behave yourself. But it seems as though you broke that rule. Got any proof? Well, I ain't saying yes, and, uh... I ain't saying no, but I've got to lock you up. I don't like jails, Marshal. So until you can prove what you're saying, I'm staying here. I don't want to have any trouble with you, Wes. But I'm still the law around here. So you want proof. Matt. All right, Harden, take your hands off of those guns. You know this man, Wes. But you didn't know he was a railroad detective. Put out your hands. for the murder of Marshal Corbin. On October 5th, 1878, John Wesley Harden was sentenced to a long term in the Huntsville Penitentiary in Texas. 
the most vicious killer the West had ever known, was finally behind bars. But in prison, Hardin began changing. He was quiet, well-behaved, and most astonishing of all, took up the study of law. He was a brilliant student who passed a bar examination with high honors and was notified to this effect by the Bar Association. Come in, Wes. These clothes feel a little funny on me. Yeah. Uh, you'll get used to them. Wes, you've been a model prisoner. You're a graduate lawyer now, and we're proud of you, because you're one of the few prisoners that we've ever had who's taken advantage of his time behind prison walls. Remember, you're on the right side of the law now. With your brilliance, your experience, you can be a great help to people less fortunate than yourself. Thanks, Warden. What do you plan to practice? Well, I think I'll hang my shingle out in El Paso. Uh huh? It's a good town. Here's the money we usually give our boys to help them get a new start in life. Use it properly. I will. Good luck. Thanks a lot. February 17th, 1894, having paid his debt to society, John Wesley Harden was released from the penitentiary and hung out his shingle in El Paso, Texas. Here he became a successful and respected attorney, and it looked as if though the former bad man and convict had a brilliant future ahead of him. Unfortunately, it wasn't in the cards for Harden to stay on the right side of the law. His excessive drinking, his fondness for bad company led to a grave mistake. He was instrumental in engineering the murder of an El Paso citizen. I happened to be in El Paso at the time, taking care of a railroad matter. So I found out what happened at first hand. Inside. Hey, you my name? Oh, hello, Constable. You looking for me? Yeah. I got a warrant for your arrest. Well, there must be some mistake. What's the charge? Murder. Oh, you sure this is not an old warrant? You know, I've already paid my debt to society. No, it's a brand new one. You know, this could prove to be very interesting. Maybe I could try my own case. You could try, Harden. With the evidence we got, you'd waste your time. Let me tell you something, Selman. Nobody's taken me to jail. I've had my belly full of it. Give me your guns, Harden. Over my dead body. Harden drew his gun on Constable Selman, the same as he had on the Marshal in Abilene. But on August 19, 1895, it didn't work. There were 40 notches in Harden's gun. There would never be a 41st. There was a time nobody could beat Wes Harden at the draw. He lost his touch. Take him inside, boys. That was the end of the worst killer in the West, a man who had a second chance which few outlaws ever get. John Wesley Harden could have taken the right road, but instead decided to go the other way until retribution caught up with him.